Okay, so I'm doing task 19, which is keeping operating records. Um, so I've got our patient chart here. So just kind of go down a little bit. Um, so we start off um, everything with a check-in report, even for our surgeries. Um, so this basically just has the general information, the owners, um, their address, phone number, which we always double check. Um, then our patient, their species, breed, age, color, um, weight, sex, whether they're um, uh, spayed or neutered. Um, and then we just have like notes, like this patient was boarding, um, and but and then the day after she was going to go ahead and get spayed, um, so that the owner wouldn't have to deal with her during recovery. Um, so we just kind of go through, and when we go in um, to check in our surgeries, we also have our anesthesia and surgical consent form. Um, so we have a couple of additional services that we always check to see if they want to do. Um, we have the option of doing the laser for um, things like spays, neuters, um, microchipping while they're under, um, nail trims, and ear flushes and cleaning. Um, and then we just have general stuff like um, asking if they want to do uh, our pre anesthetic blood work, which is a CBC Chem 10, um, or if they decline it. Um, this one did decline. Um, so we still do a minimal blood work on them, um, just not the whole panel. Um, and then, you know, the general stuff of, you know, the risk of anesthesia. And we, again, double check that we have a good phone number for them. Um, so from there, we, um, on our check in reports, because this is one of the things that's on the top of ours, we check off things like if this um, was a six month old Yorkie. Um, so she had two retained um, canines, so we always like put a little box with a check for that. So same thing, she wanted the laser, she wanted to get a uh, microchip, and then we checked to make sure that we did the minimal blood work. So that way when we're putting our charges into our computer, um, we make sure that we, as uh, the surgical tech that goes in and does all the charges, make sure that she puts those in. Um, and so a lot of times the doctors will also put some of the drugs um, and the control drugs like their numbers so that we make sure that we check those off and put them in our controlled drug log. Um, so then the next thing that we have is our um, anesthetic monitoring chart. So just normal stuff, um, name, patient ID, um, whether it's a canine or a feline, um, and the status of them breed, age, and the procedure they're doing. Like I said, this was a spay. Um, we have their ASA status, and then we have um, some of their pre-anesthetic exam um, weight, which we always convert to kilograms for ease of that for all of our drugs. Um, and then our minimal blood work, um, their uh, BUN, glucose, and their PCV. Um, and then we have our list for our pre-meds and what we use to induce doses, mills, the route, um, and since this was already done, we have the time added on. Um, and then we have all of our chart. So, like for her, we have the tube size in the deck, what type of system it was. Um, this was, we only spent about 40 minutes in surgery, less than that. Um, so this, is, of course, is the ISO level that she was, you know, kept on the whole time. Um, and then it has fluid rates, the type, um, and then some after meds like carprofen. We have our dose of carprofen. Um, and then the fluids that she was kept on during surgery, and then of course our monitoring with our heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, um, SpO2, carbon dioxide. Um, and then on ours, it has a little spot for events and then a comment section. So um, right at about 15 minutes was after we made um, the first incision. So. Uh, that was there was an increase in heart rate and respiratory rate, so we always write down that that's when we were doing the first incision, and um, we had to spike up her ISO here, um, and then of course our fluid rate that so we had to jump those up to um, to get her blood pressure um, low when it was low at first when she was first put in her anesthesia, and then it's got our beginning um, of anesthesia and ending of anesthesia and surgery, so we have those times in. Um, so other than that, uh, the next thing that we would do is since we're, all of our stuff is on the computer, um, I printed it off for the ease of the video. Basically, it just has everything kind of listed out. Um, so our pre-anesthetic exam, um, this one was now at Conrad Casings noted, um, or abnormal findings. So if there was anything on the exam that they saw that was abnormal, they would 
put that under the abnormal findings and then the pre-anesthetic blood work um, we put it and she declined it and then we put in what the levels were um, so basically this just gets all printed out in a surgery um, procedure um, so whenever the doctor needs to go back and look at it this all just pops up so for ease of the doctors and for us as techs to be able to find things so CBC, what chemistry profile, a thyroid um, and then we had their anesthetic risk. She was a minimal risk since nothing was abnormal um, and a, apparently healthy patient. Um, the fluid rate, pre-anesthetic meds with the amount and the routes. Same thing with the anesthetic, the propofol, um, and then perioperative medications, which we just have a list of generals and what their bigs per mil are. Um, and then the doctor will go in and put their surgery notes. Um, so this one has already been completed, so the doctor put in all the notes about how they did an incision, what they suture size, and et cetera that they used. So the other thing that as a surgery tech that I would want to do is make sure that um, for them that we have a print off of the take home instructions. Um, so this is a general thing and we go in depending, you know, whether we use absorbable or non-absorbable suture and change some of the notes. Or, you know, depending on if it's a dental and they have antibiotics to go home or something like that, we add that in um, and go over it. And if uh, the patient has done pre-anesthetic blood work, we'll also put that in their bag to go home, a copy of the blood work. Um, and, of course, any meds. So that's some of the stuff I would want to check um, afterwards. And, of course, a lot of this stuff on the surgery report, um, we, the text, go ahead and put in. So all of the anesthetic medications because it goes through um, our system to charge it out and then of course it goes through and tells us how much of each drug we have left as well um, to make everything a little bit easier on us and then the doctor just goes in and does their notes. So the next thing that I would want to do is go through and um, uh, either put in a lot of these drugs, these drugs already got logged today, but I would want to make sure that they got logged. Um, so for instance the Buprenex um, we actually have three different types of buprenex. We have an oral, um, a 0.6 mg per mil, which is our stronger dose, and our 0.15. Um, so this just has, you know, the date, the patient ID, and the description, which bottle number it was, the reason, whether it was for pain or pre-med, um, the amount used, and then a running balance, and then we put our initials once we log them. Um, and then, like I said, we always check off to make sure that everyone knows that we have logged those before we um, shred this copy once it's all in the system. Um, so the next thing would be our propofol. And same thing, name, bottle, reason for propofol is always anesthetic. Um, and then our running log. So this one, the day it was, um, the description, how much we used, and then the balance of it and the initials. Um, so that's pretty much it for our records um, and how that we double check and make sure everything. Like I said, all this stuff is on the computer for us, um, so I just printed it off for the ease of the video.